Welcome to Nightline. I'm Gwen Hall, your host, and we are so glad that you've joined us on this Friday night. We're going to be introducing our guests in just a little while, but today I, I had the opportunity and was honored to do this. A very special friend of mine went home to be with the Lord, and so I got to do the music and just worship. I'm going to sing some of the songs I sang today and had an opportunity just to, to speak there to the folks that were there just to honor her. We had a celebration service. Oh, yes, we did. And so I'm going to tonight just start off with some of the songs that I sang and worship tonight. Will you worship with me? Well, I woke up this morning feeling fine. I woke up with heaven on my mind. Well, I woke up with joy in my soul. Bye. 
that you might increase in our life. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this service tonight. We give it to you and we thank you ahead of time and praise you for what you're going to do. Amen, amen. At this time, I want us to go over to wait, honey. So good to be with you this evening. And as always, uh, I want to mention a couple things right up front. Our prayer partner. They come so faithfully Monday through Friday, and they're here to take your call. If you've got a need, no matter what it is, you may be going through something spiritual, financial, family problems, health-wise, whatever, give us a call and let us join our faith with yours and lifting that need up before the Father. There's power in prayer, power in the unity of prayer. And so give us a call, and you know Gwen likes those good praise reports. So call in if you've got one of those to share. And I also want to mention, you know, on the first Saturday of each month, Pastor Bill and Nell Montgomery hold the uh, prayer vigil here, the WGGS TV 16 prayer vigil right here at the TV station. And it's from 10.30 uh, tomorrow morning till 2.30 uh, in the afternoon. So come and join them and spend a time in prayer, praying for our nation and family needs and our community. I'll tell you, in this day and time, there is so much that we need to be praying for. That's a good time to come together. So come on out and join Pastor Bill and Nell Montgomery tomorrow right here at the TV station. Gwen, it's been a good day. It has been a good day. It started early this morning and... We had a celebration service today, and didn't we? And it was we? a great celebration. It was. A good friend of mine, well, several good friends of mine that was there today, but we were honoring and celebrating the life of Carolyn Dryman today, and I've known her ever since I got saved way. I was 19 and went to a little church and met her and Trina there at the church. But today we celebrate. In fact, I sing some of the songs tonight. But And then the Lord gave me the message on Mary and Martha. Right. <laughs> out of Luke and the Lord said to me just as clear as could be he said she had Carolyn had Mary's heart you know it was Martha that was encumbered about and we'd be the same way if we knew Jesus was coming to our house it just uh, scurrying I don't have china but if you, I could just see somebody putting out their best china or their best recipes making sure everything was just right in place but Mary wasn't helping and Martha got kind of upset about it Wade that's right <laughs> But Jesus said, she's chosen the best part. And the Lord said to me, that's what Miss Caroline had the heart, the very spirit of Mary, because she was so hungry after God's presence. And, and when I'd go and get with them, we would pray together. And then at Christmas, this made my Christmas this year especially. And Karen and Glenn are here tonight, and they were there at the house during this time. And we actually went into the music room, my office, and we got together and we just began to praise him and thank him and it was just the sweetest presence and I know Trina talked about how Carolyn loved that moment of us getting together and I doing know. that and I know she loved another <laughs> moment of getting together you would go to Trina to get your hair done oh yeah Trina's done my hair for and years I remember <laughs> the first few times Gwen would go and finally she'd get home and I'd ask her, how long does it take to get your hair done? And come to find out, uh, uh, Trina's mother, Carolyn, would say, call me when you're about through. And she would come down and join them. 
and they would spend time just praising God, singing and praying and having a great time. <laughs> it was a great celebration. Yeah. So it hurts your heart, you know, you're going to miss them, but at the same time, you know, she's just having the time of her life. That's right. Amen. Our very special guest tonight, close friends, very close friends of ours, Glenn and Karen Hunt, and we just, we just love them and and their family's here tonight. Karen's sister, Lynn, is here tonight. And so you're going to get to meet some of the family and hear some of the things that's going on in their life. And their two daughters right now are going to sing Hannah and Harmony. They're going to do a song, Who You Say I Am. Let it minister to you.
beautiful song tonight. Yes, it is. It's beautiful singing, and there's more of it to come tonight. Our scripture tonight comes out of Psalms. It's Psalms uh, 105, verse 1 and 2, and it reads like this. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. And I like that part, that word make. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. And that's what we should be doing. I'll tell you, he's done so much for all of us that we should be singing praises unto him. And not only that, giving him praise for all he's done, but make known his deeds among the people. We're all ministers unto the gospel, and that's something that we can do. What God has done for us, we should be sharing with others uh, of what he has done <clears throat> and just praising his name for it. Gwen, that's, sometimes I think we, that's an area we fall a little short in is just giving God praise, telling other people what he's done. And opportunities you have when so you're out times. and about, you know, different places. That's it. No matter where we're yeah, at. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we can do that. And it's easy to bring up in conversation. You start talking to people and just, there's all kinds of ways to lead in and start talking about his goodness, his love, his grace, his mercy that he bestows upon us so richly in so many ways. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about tonight, Wade. Just all the good things that that's God right. has done for this family and how he's blessed them and again they're really close friends of ours but through the whole program tonight you're you're just going to be so blessed by some of the testimonies and healing stories and uh, you don't you just don't want to miss it and, and many of you say well if I don't get to watch it tonight I could watch it Monday morning of course at eight o'clock but you can also FaceTime it right now live you hear right. I know our kids and grandkids in New York watch it sometime from time to time you just FaceTime it and you can get the program right this minute. I actually watched um, yesterday morning's program on my phone. I was busy doing something, so I just took the phone to the bedroom and, and uh, turned it on and just caught every bit of it. That's so right. even the next day you can catch it. That's it. And, you know, we've heard from people from you yes. know, uh, in Iraq. We've heard from people in Sweden right. and different parts of the world, you know, that uh, can pick it up. <laughs> but, again, we're all ministers unto the gospel. And we need to make known all that he's done for And, us. you know, it's up to us to do it. That's it. You know, unless we just reach out to somebody, you know. That's right. A lot of times when we're even going through the line, <laughs> well, you know, we just say, have a blessed day, and it just opens it up, you that's know. Right. Or sometimes the person that's working, if it's the cashier, she may say something along that line to us. And, like, you love praise reports. I love praise and reports. And that's what it's all about. Absolutely. When you give God a uh, praise of what God has done for you, mm -hmm. it helps others, helps build faith that somebody else may be going through the same thing and they realize, you know, what God's done for them, He can do for me, and He does, and He will. Amen. Wade, would you just open up with prayer? Uh, yes. Father, what a privilege it is yes, to come is, before Lord. the throne of love, mercy, and grace. Lord, to just lift you up, Father. Give you praise, Father, for all that you do. Lord, we can't. If we, as we start now giving you praise, we couldn't praise you enough for all you've done for us each and every day of our lives. And, Lord, we ask your blessings, Lord, tonight yes. upon this service, Father, yes, Father, and upon your people that are watching tonight, Lord. I know there are many needs, and I know, Lord, that you can work in behalf of each and every one. And, Lord, we look forward to the praise reports to come from that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Now we're going back to some good singing. Two songs this time by Hannah and Harmony. What a beautiful name and no longer slaves. <laughs>
My mother's womb, you 
just worship I sense his presence in the house and you know in Mark in the second chapter it talks about and it was noise that he was in the house who was in the house Jesus was in the house makes all the difference I want him to be in the midst of everything that's going on around me and the Holy Spirit do Wade we've got special guests tonight our good friends Karen and Glenn Hunt we welcome you tonight let's make them welcome yes, yes. <laughs> they we just do a lot of things with them. We cruise with them. We go to eat with them. We talk about Jesus. We, we just have a wonderful time. Mm-hmm. And Karen went with me when I spoke at the uh, very special seminar last year. It, it, I guess it was right there near after Valentine's Day. It was about the third week of February over in Gatlinburg. Mm-hmm. And her sister's here tonight, and she actually helped me in the alders. And so, yeah. Lynn, it's so good having you here tonight. She'll be joining us just a little bit later. But what's the Lord doing in your life? Well, right now we're uh, just thankful that we've got our daughters, all five daughters. Amen. And they all know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and are serving Him on a daily basis. Amen. And I'm just very Amen. thankful for them. That's, that's awesome. And, and, and two of them sing tonight. They all sing. Yes. I said, my prayer is one day, one day, yeah. <laughs> oh, you girls listening to me tonight, <laughs> one day we get them all five singing. Have I ever heard them? Oh, I was, we were at Randy and Jamie's um, Crossfire mm-hmm. out in Mars Hill. And they were a lot younger then. I don't remember exactly their age. Whoo, when they stepped up to sing, I'm going to tell you something. There was awesomeness in the house. It was powerful, wasn't it, Wade? Very powerful. <laughs> I'll tell you, when they sing together like that, and yeah. like you hear tonight. Oh, yeah, definitely. The, the key is an anointing. The anointing yes. is there. Yeah. It makes Amen. a difference, and they are anointed of God, and we're so glad to, to have you here, and I know you're proud of these girls. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So how many, now I know Wade and I have 20 grandkids, but how, your family's growing too. Mm-hmm. So how many do you have? We have 12. 12. 
No way they're trying yep. to catch up with us. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, we'll let them catch up oh, with yeah, us. Please, <laughs> Get busy, please girl. hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a picture with me tonight, but my, my sister, I have one sister, and they have a brand new baby. Jason and Jessica, my nephew, has a brand new baby, and his name is Jackson. They live in Charlotte, and the baby was 10 pounds and 8 ounces, very healthy. And so I hope soon to have some pictures where I can show them on TV. I wish Vicky would just come because I can tell her and Rick's really proud. Can't you wait? Oh, yes. <laughs> Nothing like having kids and grandkids. Yes. Of course, we've got three great-grandkids now, so oh. you've got to hurry up now. <laughs> we haven't got there yet. Oh, I know. We're going to be going on a trip with them. I guess it's about the third week of October, looking so forward to yes. that. Yes. We try to do that every year, so... We're excited about that. There's one thing that Glenn and I know what to do on a cruise. Oh. It's eat. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of practice. A lot of yeah. practice. And, and you know, this, thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> I know Glenn's favorite, too. He's like me. He likes the sweets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know where the little cafe is, don't we, That's exactly? exactly. <laughs> that little cafe stays open all night, too, Karen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Karen tonight. We, we're going to be talking about several things through the program, but God has certainly blessed this family. And yes. there was a time, and Karen and Glenn, we went to church years ago at Candler House yes. of Prayer, and mm -hmm. there was a time in her life that you faced a challenge. Yes. And the girls are going to come over and add to this after a while, but I think you wanted Glenn to kind of share it more. Did you want him to share it? Well, we were going to... Tag team? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we were going to uh, say that uh, we met uh, in Virginia on a blind date. I think we got a picture of that. No, this one's the this, you were married. Yes. And um, the first date, the Lord told me that he was the one. The first date? The first date. <gasps> now, it took, I was a little more hard-headed and hard-hearing. It took me two years to figure it out. But. I was going to say to you, can't you the same thing? I think I already know that yeah. answer. Mm -mm. And um, so we dated for two years, and then we got married. And then um, we had um, our first um, child three years later. Which was Hannah, who sang tonight. Yes. yes. The one that Beautifully. Was on the left. Absolutely. And then we had, um, about every two years, we, had a, um, we added three more, so that was four. And then... At 29 years of age... We got our first real test mm -hmm. to test our spiritual lives. When uh, Karen would wake up in the middle of the night gasping for air. Oh, wow. And uh, she kept telling me, I can't breathe. And so I, we began a long journey. I took her to five or six different doctors trying to find out what was wrong with her. And they all would come back to me, or most of them come, came back to me after they examined her and said, I think it's all in her head. It's a, it's a <gasps> mental thing. So they had me kind of convinced <laughs> that that's what it was. But eventually, uh, a friend of ours, Dr. Isby, he said, I want, I want you to bring her by my office and let me examine her and see if I can find out what's going on with her. He took one look in her right, uh, left eye, left left eye. And she, he noticed that it was the pupil was smaller than the one in the right eye. And he called it Horn's disease. He said, it's usually caused by something pressing on the nerve. He said, I think she's got cancer. He said, you need to go to, he said, I'm going to set you up for an appointment at Mission Hospital with, uh, I guess, a CAT scan. And so that's what we did. We took her to a Mission Hospital the next day or so, and they did a CAT scan on her. And I noticed as they did the CAT scan, First, there was one doctor standing there looking at it while they were going through the slides. The next thing I know, he called another doctor over there, and they called two or three more doctors over there. The next thing I know, there's about five or six doctors looking at her CAT scan. And I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? So they, finally, one doctor came back into the room where I was at he had, they, after they finished looking at the CAT scan. And he said, Mr. Hunt, he said, uh, I've got bad news. I said, what's that? He said, well... He said, your wife has a rare type of cancer, and, and uh, she will die. Wow. And I looked at him, and I said, Doc, I appreciate all y'all tried to do. I said, but until the great physician tells me that, I said, I'm hanging on. Right. That she shall live and she shall not die, but shall declare the works of God. 
And so we went from that point on. They were going to put her on a helicopter and fly her down to UNC where a specialist down there with that type of cancer, or what they thought it was for sure, uh, was there at UNC. So they couldn't fly her because the weather was too bad. So they'd load up an ambulance. And at that time, Arnold Vess was our pastor. And uh, he was there as we left an ambulance. And the doctor that uh, watched us leave an ambulance told him, he told me later, he said, she'll be dead before she gets to Chapel Hill. Wow. So I was in the ambulance. I couldn't ride in the back with her, but I had to ride in the front. And as the ambulance driver was trying to talk to me, I, I guess I seemed type kind of rude, but I was praying. I prayed the whole way down there that God would spare my wife. And they didn't know that that was the best. They had me on oxygen. And that was the best I had been able to breathe in about six months. Wow. While I was in, in there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just had the peace of God. You know, you know, he came in and told me what the doctor said. They said that you, you're going to die. And I just had the peace. I said, I'm not, I'm not dying. I don't believe I'm going to die. Because God just gave me the perfect peace. Amen. So anyway, to make a, try to make a long story short, we try to fit it in this short time frame. They got her in there as soon as they got her to UNC, and they pulled her back in the room, and they looked at the CAT scans, and they said, uh, we've got to do something right now. We've got to put an airway down her right now. They said her airway was restricted to the size of two BBs. Wow. They said, we don't see how she is living. She should be dead right now. And so they put her in there, and we, we asked her, and said, before they do the procedure, can we pray? So we prayed, and we both got peace, especially she did. She got a word from God. And God said to me in that still, small voice, he said, do not fear to have it done. Say it again. Do not fear to have it done. Wow. And they allowed me to stay in there when they did the procedure. Wow. And as soon as they got that airway down past that restricted area in her throat, I heard a gasp of a big air, a gulp of air, just, just, just huge. I mean, it was just a, such a sigh of relief that she could finally breathe. Wow. What it was, it was a tumor in her neck. Oh. Wrapped around all the main arteries. They couldn't operate, and that tumor had her her windpipe almost completely shut off. And I took her to five or six different doctors, and none of them could find this. I don't know why. Wow. But uh, anyway, after that, we had a long journey. I'll let you tell something. We just, you know, had um, like a year's treatment of um, chemotherapy and radiation, and um, I, there was not a time that I was sick. Thank the Lord. Uh, and yes. he just, God was just with me th through the thick and the thin. He never let me down. And there was you one. You feel his presence. Yes. And there was one time that I received um, two, um, just two uh, letters or uh, cards at the same day. And they were, they were the identical cards. Wow. And. Fear not. Fear not. I am with you. I'm that was a confirmation. Yes. <laughs> from And uh, his aunt would take a picture of uh, me and, and all the children, and they would go around and s sing and ask for prayer. And we had people everywhere praying for me. Prayer works. Yes, it does. And I, we've never felt so much in the family of God. So, it's during that time. What length of time would you say from point A to point B that you were from the time you found out through the treatments? It was about a year. <coughs> yeah. A year? Yes. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close to a year. And then um, a, um, about a month after I got a, off of chemotherapy, um, I got pregnant, which they were just overjoyed because they said most people don't get pregnant after going you got through the, pregnant yes after going through the, the yes. treatments yes oh, a wow. month a, a month after so uh, the girl harmony that's yes. the same tonight that's, that's who yeah that's, that's mm -hmm. the, we're gonna we're gonna have child. them join you here in just a minute and mm -hmm. you know if you're if you're watching this right now and you're thinking wow you you got that right wow because it was a god thing it was yes. a miracle 
from going from doctor to doctor and them saying, you know, it's nothing going on, to them telling Glenn it's all in your head, till actually coming down and finding out what it was and how serious it was. Mm -hmm. But through every bit of that, God gave her a peace. Yes. We're going to go to Wade right now at the phones, and just as soon as we come back, the girls are going to join over here and just add on to the conversation. Wade, honey. Requests are coming in. What one thing I love, there's already been a salvation. Praise God. Yes. Let's give him praise for that. Amen. <laughs> Giving their heart to the Lord, and that'll be a change in their life. Some of the uh, requests that have already come in. Here's one with family troubles, a uh, lot of depression, emotional problems. Uh, we just lift this family up right now in Jesus' name. Father, speak peace into this family, Lord. And Lord, unite them, Lord, with your word in Jesus' name. Let it be the foundation for their lives, Father, in Jesus' name. Uh, please pray for my husband going through a bout with cancer. And we just curse that cancer to go in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Uh, please pray for a friend of mine uh, who is on drugs, needing deliverance. And we just remember them in prayer right now. Here's someone that's... Uh, uh, been going through a bout with cancer for uh, eight years and need to lift them up in prayer, and we do. So many requests, but if you've got a need, call in and let us pray over that need that you have and lifting it up before the Father. Let's go back to Gwen. Well, praise God for the salvation. That's what this program is all about. Nightline is a lifeline, and we're here tonight with the Hunt family, really good friends of ours. We've just really grown to love them, and their family, and Lynn, she's here tonight, and so they've joined us over here on the set, and I want to take a moment, if I could, and let's just show, they were talking about how they met, and I, this picture that we're going to show first, I thought they were just still really young then, because they, <laughs> they really look young in this picture, but if we could just go ahead, see to me, y'all still look like you're just really <laughs> teenagers there, honestly. <laughs> so how, can I be nosy? How old were you in that picture? Probably about 20. Put the picture back up 21. one more time. 20, you were 20? 20? Oh, my goodness. There's mm -hmm. no way. Mm -hmm. Were y'all already married? Mm -hmm. you, had you had a baby yet? No. No. Of course you hadn't. You look too young. Mm -hmm. And no. we can move on to some of the other pictures. Y'all are cute as a button. <laughs> okay, and this one? That's, this one was... That's our first four daughters. Before, we had, before, I, had, before I had cancer. Before you These had cancer. Four of them. Beautiful family, and I, all their names begin with H. Mm -hmm. yeah. here, <laughs> I hope we have them all here. This is Harmony. And this was Harmony. This was after when after. they said you would never yes. have another child. Mm -hmm. You've grown up, Harmony. <laughs> 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 and then this is your whole family. Yes. Maybe you could just yeah. take a minute and just tell us who they are, because some of them couldn't be here tonight. Okay. Starting on the left, that ugly fellow on the, with the blue <laughs> shirt on, that's me. That beautiful woman beside me with the dark hair, that's Karen. <laughs> then there's uh, Hannah, which is standing in the very back, mm -hmm. the tallest. And then uh, on to, in front of her, on the left, is Heidi, which is in front of her mother. And then uh, I'm trying to look, I can't Holly, see that one. Is that Holly? Holly? Yes, Holly. Holly in the, red, in the burgundy. And then Harmony, of course, over on the right-hand side. And back behind her is Heather, the blonde. And behind her, that's Heather. Beautiful family. Beautiful yes. family. Very proud. Oh, I'm sure you uh, love the Lord. They all serve all, in Jesus. All saved, all serving God. And we're just, we're just thrilled to death. If I could ask you, Hannah, during this time that your mom, you're the oldest. Mm -hmm. How old were you when? I think I was about six. Six years old. How, how did that? What did you think? What was going through your mind at that time? I, I don't know. I just knew I had to be the one that kind of stepped up and did things because. Um, I mean, she was just basically confined to her room, and so I remember getting soup out and making soup and Aww. kind of taking care of everybody and keeping everybody quiet. Um, so I, that's what I remember when she was when she was sick. Yeah. So. And through that year, through that year, after that year, how did you did you progress? How did that the progression come along and everything smoothly? Yes. Yeah. Um, my mom. She took um, all the children and kept them at her house. Oh, that was sweet. And uh, we did, um, went to, and we lived with uh, Glenn's parents. 
during part of the treatment. So um, his mother would come in every day, sing and praise to the oh, Lord. Oh, that's awesome. She yes. would. And, ru and rub your feet. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> how sweet is that? Yeah. Well, um, then after what amount of time when that had gone by, did you find out you were pregnant? Because you really weren't expecting to be pregnant. Oh, no. It was a month after I got off of chemotherapy. How much? A month. A month? After I got off chemotherapy. And then I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, <laughs> we can't even imagine. But we're glad you're here with us, Harmony. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful girls and so anointed to the Lord. You know how God has blessed you all. You know, they've been an example to you, you your mom and dad. They live it every day, I know, because I'm around them. And I love being around them because I don't know anything else to talk about but Jesus Amen. and the good Amen. things of God and how he blesses. And when we go through times in our life, he always sees us through. He does. Always. And the thing that I liked that you said most of all was how you had that peace. There's nothing like the peace of God. Nothing. In the midst of any storm, or trial that you go through. Well, if you've got that peace, you can make it. Yes. Yes. Even, even when we feel down, God says He is our strength. Yes. And uh, He just He just helps us, you know, to get up and go. And to go. I wouldn't even know how to how to live right now on this earth without Him. I trust mm -hmm. Him for everything. Yes. Everything mm -hmm. I do, everything we do every day, we simply trust Him. And if you're watching tonight and you're hearing this story, and maybe you've been given a bad report, God can turn that around for you, and He can give you that same peace. Yes, He can, just like He did her. And if you would like for us to pray over your request, maybe it's some cancer you're fighting, maybe it's depression, what, whatever it is, just know that this program is not by chance. It was so ordained of God for her to be here tonight and, and talk about her miracle. It was mm -hmm. a miracle. Yes. God works in mysterious ways, don't he, Wade? He does. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes in ways we don't expect. That's right. Because uh, his ways are not ours. That's right. And I'm so glad that we can just defer to him and let him have his way in our life. That a lot of times it's when we let go and let God have his way, that's when things really turn around. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this has not been the only obstacles you've faced in life. I'm sure there have been many, you know, but with the help of the Lord. And that's tonight, that's what I would say to you. You know, if you don't know Jesus, I can't imagine how you're fighting battles of sickness or finance or battles in your marriage or with your kids on drugs. I, I want to know that the Lord is there as my help and yes. as my strength, Amen. <laughs> that Amen. he's that peace speaker. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's what I'm so glad about tonight. And it makes all the difference in our lives yes. when we know him. I mean, really know him, know the person. Yes. You know, you can have a relationship. We've talked about this so many times before. It's the relationship that we can have with our Heavenly Father way. It's one thing to know of God it's an, and to know about God, but it, the key is to know Him personally, yes. intimately, yes. relationship. That's where the difference comes in. That's what makes all the difference in the world is that when you know Him personally, that's when you can trust Him. That's when faith can take over and say, I believe in you, Lord. Yeah. I believe your word. I can stand upon your word. And I know, having met this family and known them for the years I have, what an inspiration y'all are to me, how you stood on the Word. And, and you know, at times it's so hard, but you trust Him. Absolutely. You place that trust in Him, and He'll never fail us. I think we've got, I've got a few more pictures, I think, of the family. I believe we do. do, I, do we, is that all of the family? Yeah. Okay, so this is all of the family. And tonight, in the second part of the program, we're going to talk about Lacey, yeah, their granddaughter. And, and many of you, because I've mentioned it so many times, and I guess it was sometime last year or sometime that. Two years. Has it been almost, almost two years? Mm -hmm. Where has time gone? Because Hannah was wow. here. Mm -hmm. 
and we talked about Lacey's fight against a AFM, excuse me. And so tonight we're going to give you an update because even though her situation looks so bleak mm -hmm. and she's got a ways to go, she's come a mighty long way. Yes. yes. And you're going to be so blessed. And, and um, Lynn had the opportunity just a few weeks ago to actually go up with Lacey and B and spend some time with her. She's going to share some things along that line. Wade, I know you have got some requests there, and yes. we're going to be praying over them. Yes. I can't think of anybody else. I'd want to lay hands on them besides this family because they know how to believe God. You know, it's when you've gone through the storm. Yes. <laughs> it's when you've gone through the storm and you've come through it that you're that overcomer. Sometimes in the midst of the storm, that's why you need other people praying yes. and interceding. And I have certain people that I call when, when there is a need or there's a crisis, I pick up that phone and they know who they are. I know they know how, they've got a main line. <laughs> yeah. And you control. need that sometimes in your life. Those crisis times when it's hard for you to pray, mm -hmm. even though you have that peace, it's hard for you to pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. are, are you that way? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm like that. How about you, Hannah? You have to relinquish control. I'm not in control. I can't fix this. Yeah. Yes. And lay that at his feet. In y'all being young, how do you, you know, I was saying about Harmony, how do you get through things in your life? I mean, I think that you just have to really press into his word because that's where he, I think, really can speak with you. Yes. Um, and especially if you have something going on that you just need to fully put your faith and trust in Him. Um, I think that's something that really helps. When I have issues, you know, I, that I need to give, you know, get His peace with, um, that's where I go to. It's just His Word. And, and you both have children. You know, sometimes it, it's the hardest thing to pray. I want somebody to join their faith with me if it's something that my child's going through or a sickness or whatever. And you have, how many children do you have? I have two. Two? A boy and a girl, so I've got one of each. Yeah. How about you? I have two as well. I have uh, two boys, um, five and two years old. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like what Harmony said here. Yeah. You Sometimes you have to press into, yeah. and that made me think about that's the when you have to give that sacrifice of praise. Mm -hmm. yes. When things don't look the best necessarily, but you still praise him for the answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, y'all have praised your way through many situations. That's what you did. Yes. Glenn yeah. did. You just praised your way and you thanked him. You was going to come through it. And you did. You have to keep your eyes upon him and not on your circumstances. Faith, faith is the evidence of things not seen, the substance of things hoped for. That's right. Amen. That's right. Will you stay with us? We're going to come right back here with the second half of Nightline. Don't you miss it because we've got more good praise reports coming up. 